After two days of fighting, the cornfields around Gettysburg, Pennsylvania were all destroyed, so that one could hardly tell there had been crops there at all. Green, grassy pastures trampled on by so many boots and horse hooves were now nothing but mud. The trees in the forests had lost their leaves, and many were burned or simply blown to bits by cannonballs. In short, all around Gettysburg was a wasteland, but the battle was not over yet. It was past midnight. The date was July 3rd, 1863. Two Confederate soldiers stood guard outside the door of a small stone farmhouse at the edge of the battlefield. Several Confederate officers paced back and forth in the yard. Should we see if he's ready to issue orders? asked one of the officials. No, don't bother him. The old man will let us know when he's ready, said another. Inside the house, a man stood hunched over a table, studying a map by candlelight. He was not a very old man, just 56 years old, but constant war and worries had brought new wrinkles to his face. He was far more thin and frail or weak than he had been just two years before. But all the soldiers loved General Lee as though he were their own father. They called him the old man out of respect. A general is a military officer in charge of soldiers. General Lee was in charge of the Confederate Army. General Lee's full name was Robert E. Lee. General Lee was born in 1807. He was the son of a hero from the Revolutionary War who had fought bravely alongside George Washington to make America free from Great Britain. Robert E. Lee joined the Army at age 17 and graduated second in his class from the United States Military Academy. He had the second highest scores in his class, which means he did very well in school. Then Lee served in the U.S. Army during the Mexican-American War. Lee was proud to serve in the U.S. Army before the Civil War, but Robert E. Lee was born and raised in Virginia, a Confederate state. Lee married Mary Custis, a great-granddaughter of George and Martha Washington. After they married, Robert and Mary lived in Mary's plantation home known as Arlington House. This is a photo of Arlington House in Virginia. Lee did not think the South should secede from the Union. Like many other people, he wanted to find a peaceful way to end the disagreement, and he swore he would never break the oath or promise he had taken to uphold the U.S. Constitution. As a soldier, he made an oath or a promise to do what was best for the United States. At first, Lee refused to join the Confederate Army when President Jefferson Davis asked him to take command. Remember, Jefferson Davis was elected president of the Confederacy. He is the man here who is seated with a paper in his hand. Then just before the Battle of Fort Sumter, President Lincoln asked Lee if he would agree to take command of the entire Union Army. Lee refused that offer as well. Only when his home state of Virginia decided to secede and join with the Confederacy did Lee finally make up his mind. He hated the thought of fighting against the United States, but, even more, he hated the thought of fighting against his home state of Virginia. General Lee became commander of the Army of Northern Virginia, making him one of the most powerful and recognizable figures in the Confederate Army. This image shows Confederate President Jefferson Davis and his closest advisors, including General Lee in the middle, discussing their war plan. Advisors are people who give suggestions or guidance to someone. Thanks in large part to General Lee's excellent abilities as a general, he commanded the Confederate Army to many victories and major battles on the field before Gettysburg. But still, so many men had died in those battles, and there was no end to the war in sight. There was a knock on General Lee's door in Gettysburg. It was Major Venable, Lee's trusted friend and aide or helper. General, I have reports from your field commanders, said Major Venable. Go ahead, he said, turning his attention back to the maps on the table. General Ewell had trouble organizing his men, sir. 
and General Rhodes failed to attack as ordered. General Early tried, but he gave up as darkness approached. Lee tapped his knuckles on the table and stared at the maps. There had been nothing but bad news all day. After two days of fighting, the Union Army held the high ground, its soldiers and cannons spread in a tight line atop a long ridge, refusing to budge no matter how fiercely the Confederates attacked. The Union Army was on higher ground than the Confederate Army, so they had a better position and ability to see. I have made my decision, Lee said. We will strike at the heart of the Union line at Cemetery Ridge and divide their forces. Then the rest of our army will attack on the left and right. In the morning, the old man rode out to greet his soldiers. The men cheered and waved their hats whenever Lee rode past, and he waved and smiled confidently, doing his best to keep their spirits high. Later that morning, though, things did not go exactly according to Lee's plans. The Confederate forces attacked, hoping to break through the Union lines and send the enemy retreating from the field. Lee knew that if he succeeded, the South would have a chance to win the war. If he lost, it may not. The battle went on all day, but the most important moment came when Lee ordered General Pickett to lead his men in a daring charge across a wide open field directly at the middle of the Union lines. The move, known as Pickett's Charge, was a catastrophe for the Confederates. A catastrophe is an event that causes great trouble or destruction. So Pickett's Charge caused a great deal of trouble for the Confederate side. Half of Pickett's men were killed, wounded, or captured. At the end of that third day, the Union still held the high ground. Lee had lost the battle and had to retreat to Virginia, abandoning hopes of invading deep into the North. The day after the battle was the 4th of July, a day when Americans normally celebrate their independence from Great Britain. In 1863, however, celebrations were not so cheerful. Even in the North, where word quickly spread that the Union had won a major battle at Gettysburg, a war-torn nation was exhausted from battle. In the three days of the battle at Gettysburg, many, many men had died, were wounded, or had been captured on both the Union and Confederate sides. This battle proved to be one of the bloodiest in all the Civil War. With all that bloodshed, few people on either side found reason to celebrate.